the ephedra products, the ephedra free products, and those that contain licorice as well are all good examples of, pharma of, of botanicals that can lead to pharmacodynamic herb drug interactions. <laughs> now, the next major category of herb drug interactions are those that have a pharmacokinetic mechanism. And that's a situation where the phytochemical can either affect the absorption, distribution, metabolism, or excretion of a conventional drug that may be taken concurrently. And so, in this, so what we're really talking about is whether or not phytochemicals can modulate drug metabolizing enzymes that are present in the small intestine and in the liver. And we're typically talking about cytochrome P450 enzymes or glucuronosyl transferases or glutathione transferases or sulfatases or such. Right? But we also have to realize that there are other proteins that can affect uh, drug absorption and transport, and those are the transport proteins. And <clears throat> they're also present in the small intestine and in the liver, blood-brain barrier, wide variety of other tissues. And then we're talking about, but when you're talking about transporters, there's two major categories. There's efflux pumps, proteins that pump drugs out of cells, and then uptake pumps that pump drugs into cells. And so if you inhibit them, they can have opposite effects. But a classic efflux pump is P-glycoprotein, and some classic uptake uh, pumps are the OATP, or the organic anion transporting polypeptides, and organic cation transporters, and there's just a laundry list of others. Right? So by affecting the, the metabolism or the transport, you can certainly affect the pharmacokinetics of a conventional medication. For those of you that may not be familiar with the cytochrome P450s, there's only a handful of them that are really important for human drug metabolism. But the most important one is one called CYP3A4. And the reason it's important is because about half of all conventional medications are metabolized to some extent by 3A4. The next most important one is 2D6, followed by 2C9, and then there's a litany of others. Now, to illustrate what we're talking about in terms of a pharmacokinetic herb drug interaction, I just want to use this cartoon here. And so here we've got a hypothetical drug. It's swallowed. Ultimately, it reaches the, the small intestine, in the lumen of the small intestine. Well, in the enterocytes that line the small intestine, there are all kinds of cytochrome P450s and transporters and such. And let's just say that this hypothetical drug is a substrate for CYP3A4, okay, for, just for il illustrative purposes. So some of that drug is going to be metabolized as it goes across the, the uh, enterocyte. And maybe only 30% gets across the intestinal mucosa. From there, it goes through the portal system to the liver, where it's exposed to even higher concentrations of enzymes and transporters. Maybe only 15% of our original dose reaches the systemic circulation to elicit some type of pharmacologic response. Now, if we take that in conjunction with some phytochemical that also inhibits that cytochrome P453A4 in the gut, and maybe even in the liver, then by inhibiting its metabolism, more of the drug gets across the mucosa, all right, uh, more gets to, ultimately more gets to the systemic circulation. So that 15% may go up to 30 or 40%, and it may render the drug more toxic. It will certainly uh, enhance its pharmacodynamic effect. Now, on the other hand, if you have a botanical that can actually induce, uh, or induce not only the activity, but also the expression of some of these cytochrome P450s in this particular case, then more of the drug gets metabolized as it goes across the intestinal mucosa, and more gets metabolized as it goes through the liver. And so and maybe instead of 15%, it may drop down to 5% or less, and so it may render the conventional medication less effective. Right? So that's kind of the, the, the spectrum of possibilities. 